54. Now in this paper number 54, question numbers 1 to 5. 1 to 5 coding and decoding. No? Shall I explain this one or not required? Next one, question number 6. 6 to 8. Now 6 to 1. Now it is based on data sufficiency, two statements are there. In a straight line of eight people, how many people are there? Eight persons, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And in a straight line of eight people, and all the persons are facing towards north. Now the question is, who stands at the extreme right end of the row? Now we need to find out the person who is at the extreme right end. Then condition number one, P is to the to the left of Q. Q stands second to the right of T. P stands third to the left of whom? P is here. Stands third to the left of Q. And Q stands second to the right of T. Q is seated second to the right of T. And only one person between Q and S. As only one person between Q and S, this is the order. Isn't it? Now in this one, if you start with this P at this place, P, T, blank, Q, blank, S. This is one possibility. In the next possibility here, next possibility S can be at this place, S can be at this place. And the person who is at the right extreme cannot be definitely said about this one. Hence, condition number one is not sufficient. Then coming to condition number two. Now in condition number two, you should say second from the left end of the line. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. You should say second from the left end of the line. Yeah, you should say second from the left end of the line. Only four people between U and W. Hence, four people between U and W. W will be here. And S is an immediate neighbor of W. S is an immediate neighbor of W. S can be either at this place or at this place. There are two possibilities. Hence, from this one also, we cannot able to definitely say that who is at the right extreme. Then by combining this, if you combine these two, now P, T, blank, Q, blank, S must be here. P cannot be at this place, isn't it? Now I'm combining this second, first one into second one. And P, if you take P at this place, P, T, blank, Q, blank, S, isn't it? Then tell me who is here? Who is at the right extreme? S is at the right extreme. As S is at the right extreme, how do we got the answer? Only by combining these two statements, and so choice five is the answer. Data in both the statements, one and two, together are necessary. Then question number seven. Now in this question number seven, how is H related to B? Now how is this H related to whom? Related to B. G is the mother of B. G is the mother of B. Tell me how to represent this one. G is the mother of T. V can be written like this. V is the sister of B. Now this V is the sister of B. B is married to D. B is married to D. B and D are married couple. D is the father of H. D is the father of H. B is a female. Then how is this H related to B? Now this H is either the son or the daughter of this B. As a gender of this person is not known, hence one alone is not sufficient. Then coming to the second one, F is the father of J. Now this F is the father of J and J is the brother of B. F is the father of J, J is the brother of B. H is the only child of B. H is the only child of B and F has no grandson. As F has no grandson, now this H is the grandchild of this F. F has no grandson and this H must be a female. As H is a female, then how is this H related to be? Daughter. Are you getting the answer or not? Only by taking condition number two. Now we got the answer that is given in choice three. With the help of condition number two, we got that H is a daughter of B. Then next one, question number eight. Now in this eighth one, among five people, A, B, C, D, and E, how many persons are there? Five people, one, two, three, four, and five. And who scored the major number of marks? D scored more than B. D is more than B, but lesser than C. And A scored more than C. A scored more than C. Then, now what is the question here? Then who scored the major marks? Then tell me who can be at the first place? Now A, B, C, D, if you observe here, out of this A, B, C, D, and E. Now C, D, B cannot be at the first place. Isn't it? Either A or E can be the maximum. Hence, one alone is not sufficient because you are getting two different answers. Then condition number two, E scored more than both B and C. E scored more than both B and C. And C scored more than B. C scored more than B means E. C scored more than B. And A scored more than D. A scored more than D. This is the possible. Clear now? Hence, with the help of condition number two also, what is your answer here? Either E can be 
or A can be. One alone is not sufficient, two alone is not sufficient. By combining these two also, there is no relation given between A and E. Hence, by combining these two also, we cannot able to determine the data even, even in both the statements is also not sufficient choice one. Done with this, question number eight. Next one, nine. 9 to 11, K is the mother of whom? K is the mother of N. This K is the mother of N can be written like this. N is married to D. N and D are married couple. J is the son of D. J is the son of D. T is the mother of D and G. T is the mother of, T is the mother of whom? T is the mother of both D and G. D and G are siblings to each other. T is the mother of D and G. G is the wife of P. Now this G is the wife of P. P is a male, G is the wife of P. T has only one son. T has only one son. And who is that son? D is that son. T has only one son and only one daughter. And K is married to F. Now this K is married to F. F is a male, K is a female. Then, now in this one, as D is a male, N is a female, then how is D related to F? F's daughter is N, daughter's husband. Daughter's husband is son-in-law, that is choice five. Then question number 10, how is G related to N? How is G related to N? N's husband is D, husband's sister. That means spouse's sister, sister-in-law, that is choice four. Then question number 11, how is J related to T? Now T is son's son, son's son is grandson, that is choice two is the answer, 11th one. Then question numbers 12 to 16, 12 to 16, coded inequalities, 12 to 16. Then 17 to 21. Now in this question number 17 to 21, tell me what is the information here? A, B, C, D, M, and O. Live on seven different floors of a building, but not necessarily in the same order. And seven floors are there, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Now seven persons lives on seven different floors. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. At the same time. Seven persons, A, B, C, D, M, N, O, live on seven different floors of a building, but not necessarily in the same order. The lowermost floor of the building is number one. The one above that is number two and so on. And each one of them likes a different mobile brand as well. O lives on floor number three. Now what is information here? Definite information given, O lives on floor number three, hence O must be at this place. O lives on floor number three, only one person between C and O. As only one person between C and O, tell me what are the different possibilities? C can be either on the fifth floor or C can be on the first floor. There are two possibilities to this C, isn't it? Only one person between O and C. And the one who likes Gioni lives immediately above C. Immediately above C in the first case, the one who likes Gioni must stay on floor number six. And in the second case, the Gioni must be on floor number two. The one who likes Gioni lives immediately above C. And only three people live between the one who likes Gioni and the one who likes Motorola. Three people in between these two and the person who likes Motorola must be on the second floor. Now in this one, one, two, three, the one who likes Motorola must be on the sixth floor. Motorola is on, only three people live between these two. And A lives immediately above M. A lives immediately above M, these two persons must be adjacent to each other. And neither A nor M likes Motorola. Neither A nor M likes Motorola, A and M cannot be at this place. Hence A and M must be here. Now in this one, A and M must be in these two places. Neither A nor M likes Motorola. Only one person between M and the one who likes Sony. M and the one who likes Sony in the first case, Sony must be on four, floor number four. And M and the one who likes Sony. Now in this case, now in the second case, it is not possible because now this Sony must be either in the place of Motorola or in the place of Zioni, which is not possible. And the second case is completely ruled off. Now we are left with only one. And B lives on one of the even number of floors below M. B lives on one of the even number of floors below M. Hence, B can be either on the fourth floor or on the second floor. And B does not like Sony. As B does not like Sony, B cannot be on the fourth floor. B must be on the second floor. And next one, only two people live between B and the one who likes HDC. Between B and the one who likes HDC, how many persons are there? There are only two people. And the one who likes HDC must be on the fifth floor. And the one who likes Samsung lives on one of the floors below C. Samsung is one of the floors below C. The Samsung can be either on the third floor or on the first floor. Samsung lives on one of the floors below C. N neither likes Blackberry nor Samsung. N neither likes 
Blackberry nor Samsung D lives on one of the floors above N. As D is on one of the floors above N, this is D and this will be N. Isn't it? And the one who likes Samsung lives on one of the floors below C. One of the floors below C either it could be NR, NRO, out of which N does not like Samsung. As N does not like Samsung, then who likes Samsung here? Now this U likes Samsung. If U likes Samsung, O likes Samsung, then what is the other thing left over here? D, N likes neither Blackberry. This N does not like Blackberry and this A likes Blackberry. If this A likes Blackberry, then what is the other thing left over here? Nokia is left over and this N likes Nokia. Clear now? This is how these seven persons are staying on seven different floors of a building and each one of them likes a different mobile as well. Now this is about question numbers 17 to 21. Question number 17 to 21. Then from question numbers 22 onwards. Now after this one question numbers 22 to 26. These five questions are based on seating arrangement. L, M, N, O, P, Q, R and S are seated around a circular table at equal distances between each other but not necessarily in the same order. And some of the people are facing the center while some of them are facing away from the center, isn't it? Now in this one clearly specified some of them are inward and some of them are outward. Now we need to find out how many are inward and how many are outward. Now eight persons are there, eight persons seated around a circular table, one, two, three, four and five, six, seven, eight, some inward and some outward and same direction means L sits the second to the right of M, M faces the center clearly given. If M is facing the center clearly given, M must be at this place. If M is here and L sits the second to the right of M, L must be at this place. And only two people between L and R, as only two people between L and R tell me how many possibilities, either R can be at this place, that is one possibility and the second possibility is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now if M is here, then L will be at this place and two people in between L and R, R is either to the left hand side of M or tau to the left of M. Next one. N sits second to the left of R. N is seated second to the left of R. In this case, N seated second to the left of R. N can be here or here based on the direction of this N. N sits second to the left of R. If R is here, N can be either at this place or at this place. N sits second to the left of R. And N is not an immediate neighbor of M. As N is not an immediate neighbor of M, N cannot be at this place and N cannot be at this place as well. Then what is the only thing left over here? N must be at this place. N at this place. And in this one also, N must be at this place. Clear enough? N sits second to the left of R. As N is seated second to the left of R, this R must be facing towards the center. Here also R is facing towards the center. N sits second to the left of R. N is not an immediate neighbor of M. O sits to the immediate right of S. O is to the immediate right hand side of S. Then what are the possibilities here? O and S can be in these two places. O and S. And similarly here also O and S or O and S in these two places. And immediate neighbors of O face opposite directions. Immediate neighbors of O are facing opposite directions. And Q sits second to the right of L. As Q is seated second to the right of L in this one, Q is seated second to the right of L. And so Q must be here. L is facing towards the center. Q sits a second to the left of L is not possible because either M or O or S must be in this one. The second case is completely ruled out. Clear now? Now Q sits a second to the right of L. L is facing towards the center. Next one, immediate neighbors of L face opposite. Immediate neighbors of L are facing opposite directions. And P sits a second to the right of N. As P is seated second to the right of N, P is at this place. Now P sits a second to the right of N. N will be away from the center. If N is away from the center, then immediate neighbors of L face opposite directions. One is N is away from the center, P must be towards the center. And N and Q face opposite directions. N and Q, N is away from the center, Q will be towards the center. Isn't it? Next one. O sits second to the right of S, as O is seated to the immediate right of S. Immediate neighbors of O face opposite directions. As immediate neighbors of O are facing opposite directions, tell me what is the possibility here. Immediate neighbors of O is facing opposite directions. Now let us take for example O at this place and S at this place. O here, then S will be here. If O and S are like this, immediate neighbors of 
who are facing opposite directions and S will be away from the center. Then O sits to the immediate right of S is false. Then O will be immediate left hand side. And this case is ruled out. Hence O and S cannot be in these two places. Hence O is at this place. If O is here, S will be here. And immediate neighbors of O are facing opposite directions. R is facing towards the center. S is facing away from the center. If S is facing away from the center, O is to the immediate right of S, that is true. And what is the other information here? N and Q face opposite directions. We have taken that information as well. Now, we need to find out the direction of this O. Immediate neighbors of O, O sits to the immediate right of S. And immediate neighbors of O face opposite directions. And Q sits to the second to the left of L. And what is the other information? P sits to the second to the right of N. P is seated second to the right of N. N and Q face opposite directions. N and Q. N sits to S. Any information regarding the direction of this O? L sits to second to the right of M. Once again, M faces the center. Two people between L and R. N sits to second to the left of R. And N is not an immediate neighbor of M. O sits to the immediate right hand side of S. O is to the immediate right of S. Immediate neighbors of O face opposite directions. And next one. Q sits to second to the right of L. Q is seated second to the right of L. Next one. Immediate neighbors of L face opposite directions. As immediate neighbors of L are facing opposite directions, we have taken that information as well. Next one. P sits to second to the right of N. N and Q face opposite directions. N and Q are facing S. Any information regarding this O? N and? N and O face the same direction. Where it is given here? N and O face opposite directions, isn't it? Maybe there is a small correction in this one. O, P? O, N, P. Where it is given here? P sits second to the right of N. And N and? Here N and Q is there, right? So, in the hard copy it is different. O faces the same direction as P. O faces the same direction as P. One more information is there. P is facing the center, then O is also facing towards the center. Done with this? Now this is about question number 17 to 21. 17 to 21. Eight persons seated around a circular table. Out of which there are six persons who are facing the center and two persons are facing away from the center. 17 to 21. Then question numbers 22 to 26. Now this is question numbers 22 to 26. After this question numbers 22 to 26, 27 to 31. As yes, question numbers 27 to 31. 27 to 31. Now these five questions are based on syllogisms and logically follows. As yes, which one should I explain out of this? 27 to 31. Shall I explain all the five? Yes, quick, 27 to 31. Question numbers 27 to 31. Explain. Then 27 to 31. Now question number 27. What is given in this one? All lines are circles. All these lines are what? All lines are circles. And all squares are lines. All line, all squares are lines. And all lines are circles. All squares are lines. All lines are circles. No circle is a triangle. No circle is a triangle, no intersection between triangle, circle and a triangle. Then, what is the first information here? No line is a triangle. No line is a triangle, definitely true. All squares are circles. All squares are circles is also true. Now, the first conclusion is what? First one is a negative conclusion. As it is a negative conclusion, to make this one false, why? Now, to check this one, whether it can be false, at least once or not, now we need to check out its complementary pair. What is a complementary? Some lines are triangles. Tell me whether some lines are triangles is possible or not. Line and triangle. If you draw triangle like this, some lines are triangle is not possible. Hence, alternate diagram cannot be drawn. Hence, this will be true forever. Then what do you want to say here? Both the conclusions follow. Both one and two, that is choice five. Done with this? Then question number 28. Now in this question number 28, 
all benches are dusk. All these benches are dusk. And no dust, no bench is a table. No bench is a table. No, no intersection between bench and table. First one, some tables are dusk is a possibility, first one is a possibility. And second one, all dusk are benches, all dusk are benches is false. Now some tables are dusk is a possibility, some tables are dusk. Now tell me whether we can draw this table like this or not. If you draw a table like this, some tables are dusk is possible. And so what is your answer? Only conclusion one is true. So I is four. Then question number 29. Now in this 29, no month is a year. No month is a year. This is month and this is year. No month is a year. Next one, all years are days. No month is a year. All years are days. Some months are holidays. Some of the months are holidays can be written like this. And some holidays are days. Some holidays are days cannot be drawn. No month is a day. No month is a day can be definitely drawn. Now the first conclusion is true. As the first one is true, now we need to check out whether it can be false at least once or not. Now, month and day tell me whether I can intersect like this or not month. Month is here, then this holiday will be here. Now also no month is here will be true. And so all the statements are valid. Alternate diagram proven, previous conclusion will be false. After making the previous conclusion, now we need to check out the first conclusion, whether it can be true now itself or not. Some holidays are days. Some holidays are days. Now also holidays and days were not intersected. And this also does not follow. And so neither one nor two, choice three. Question number 28, choice three. Then 29, choice three. Then question number 30. Question number 30. Now in this one, some phones are faxes. Some of the phones are faxes can be written like this. This is phone and this is fax. Some phones are faxes. All faxes are mails. All these faxes are what? Mails. And all offices are phones. All offices are phone. Office must be like this. All offices are phones. And all faxes are mails. And some phones are, some phones are faxes. First one, some mails or offices is a possibility. Some mails or offices is possible. And second one, some faxes. First one is a possibility, we can discuss afterwards. Some faxes are not phones. Now these are the faxes which are not phones. That is true. As it is true, now to make this one false, now we need to prove all faxes are phones. Now tell me whether we can prove like that or not, all faxes are phones. Now all these faxes, tell me whether I can draw like this or not fax, isn't it? Hence alternate diagram proven, previous conclusion will be false. Then coming to the first one, some mails or offices is a possibility. Some mails or offices, mail is here and office is here. Now I can able to intersect this one, hence it is possible. Then what is your answer here? Only conclusion one follows. Only conclusion one choice, five. Done with this? Now again, if you observe all the statements are affirmative statements. As affirmative statements is true, this is a negative conclusion. Though it is true in the basic diagram, we can make it as false by proving the alternate diagram. And again, as all the statements are affirmative, we can draw as a single diagram for all the possibilities. And question number 30. Then question number 30 first. Now in question number 31, this again based on the same statement, some phones are faxes. These are the phones which are fax. Some phones are faxes. All faxes are mails. All these faxes are mails. And all offices are phones. And all these offices are phones. All offices are phones. Then, coming to the first one, no office is a fax. No office is a fax, definitely true. Second one, some mails are phones. Some mails are phones is, is also true. Some mails are phones. Then, coming to the first one, no office is a fax. To make this one false, now I can prove some of the offices are faxes like this. Isn't it? Alternate diagram proven, previous conclusion will be false. Then what is your answer? Only conclusion 2 follows. Only conclusion 2, that is choice 3. Here again the statements are affirmative. Negative conclusion cannot be drawn. Done with this? Only 2 follows, that is choice 3. Then question numbers 32 to 36. Now in this one, 32 to 36. 8 friends A, B, C, D. J, K, L and M are seated in a straight line facing north but not necessarily in the same order. How many persons are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 persons are there. And only 3 people sit between C and L. L sits at one of the extreme ends of the line. As L is at one of the extreme ends of the line, tell me how many possibilities do we have? We have some 2 possibilities. L can be at the left extreme or L can be at the right extreme. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. Now what is the information here? Only three people between C and L, L sits at one of the extreme ends of the line. If L is here, one, two, three, three people between L and C. Or if L is here, one, two, three, C will be here. 
only three people sit between C and L. Next one, L sits at one of the extreme ends of the line. D sits a second to the left of M. M is not an immediate neighbor of C. M is not an immediate neighbor of C. M cannot be here and M cannot be here. M is not an immediate neighbor of C. M cannot be in these two places. As M cannot be in these two places, D sits a second to the left of M. As D is seated second to the left of M, D sits a second to the left of M. Now, sir, all the persons are facing towards north. As all the persons are facing towards north, D sits a second to the left of M. M cannot be here and M cannot be in these places as well. Isn't it? Now, here also M cannot be here, M cannot be here. M cannot be here. Then what is only possible here? M is here and D is here. D sits a second to the left of M. And similarly, here also M cannot be at this place. Hence, M must be here and D must be here. D sits a second to the left of M. M is not an immediate neighbor of C. Only three people between M and K. In the first case, three people between M and K, K is here. And in the second case, K must be at this place. And A is one of the immediate neighbors of K. As A is one of the immediate neighbors of K, A is at this place, immediate neighbors of K. And B is neither an immediate neighbor of L nor M. B is neither an immediate neighbor of B should be either at this place or at this place. In these two possibilities, what happens here? B is either an immediate neighbor of L or 2M. Isn't it? And the first case is ruled out because B must be an immediate neighbor of either L or M. Hence, it is violating the given condition. And B is neither an immediate neighbor of L nor M. Now, B cannot be at this place. As B cannot be here, B must be here. If B is here, B, A, K, C, D. And who is the person left over? J is the person left over. Now, this is how these eight persons are seated in a row facing towards north. The order is B, A. KC, DJ, ML. Now, this is about question number 32 to 36. Then, coming to question number 37. Now, in this question number 37, a person starts walking from his home towards a garden. First, he walks for 40 meters towards south. First, he traveled 40 meters towards south. Now, let us take this is the starting point of this person A. And, and he traveled for how many meters? 40 meters towards south. After traveling for 40 meters towards south, he takes a left turn and walks for 20 meters, left hand side, and he traveled for how many meters? 20 meters and 20 meters. He takes 90 degrees right turn and walks for another 10 meters, 90 degrees right turn and walks for another 10 meters. And he then walks for 35 meters after taking 90 degrees left hand side, left hand side, and what is the distance he has covered? Left hand side 35 meters. 35 after taking 90 degrees. Turning 90 degrees towards his left again, he walks for 50 meters. From here, he traveled how many meters? 50 meters. Lefting, turning towards his left hand side, he traveled for 50 meters. Now, this is 50. Next one. 50 meters to reach the garden. Now, A is the starting point and B is the garden. Then the question is how far in which direction is the garden from the home? Now, it's here. Now, we need to find out the distance between these two. If you observe here, the vertical distance 40 plus 10, 50. 50 towards south and here 50 towards north. South and north opposite direction hence the vertical distance is zero. Isn't it? Now we are left with only the horizontal distance. Tell me what is the horizontal distance here? 20 and 35, 20 towards east and 35 is towards east. Now 20 plus 35 is 55. And this garden is 55 meters to the east of his home. 55 meters to the east. Choice three is done. Done with this? And this is about question number 37. Then coming to question number 38. Now, what is information here? The proctor of Martinier Architecture College. Yes, what do you mean by this one? Proctor means? Proctor means the caretaker or the officer who is looking after that one. The principal or the invigilator, all this can be taken as a proctor. Now, the proctor of Martinier Architecture College had put forward the following place. What are the requests he has made? Before the director of the college. Which of the following requests, if accepted, will most adversely affect the college? Now, this person has made some of the requests. Now, tell me among the given requests, tell me by making, by accepting which request, there will be an adverse effect. Adverse means it will negatively affect the college. That means, by accepting which choice, you will get a negative result. First one, a workshop should be organized for the lecturers and professors from time to time so as to update their knowledge on the subject. 
now with the alpha by accepting this one, whether it is an advantage or disadvantage, advantage. Hence, this cannot be your answer because it must be adversely affect the college. It will not affect the college and in turn, it helps the college. Then second, attendance sheets must be signed by the students before as well as after the each lecture that they attend. Then what happens is that by doing so, we can control this attendance schedule. Well. Hence, the students cannot leave in the middle of the classroom. Hence, by doing so, whether it is an advantage or not, as this is again an advantage too. Then coming to third one, a common room should be allotted to the students of each batch so that they can study and discuss in their free time between two lectures. Yes, there is an advantage with this one or not? Yes. And fourth one, all the classes should be digitalized within three weeks. As this is also, there is an advantage. And during which the college should be kept closed. That means here he is suggesting to keep the entire college closed for three weeks. Hence, this will definitely affect the college or not? Hence, choice four, if acceptable, will definitely adverse effect on the college. And the fifth one, since the cricket team of the college has won as one, this is one, many medals and cups, they should be provided with a special coach. Hence, this is again an added advantage. Except for the remaining four, if accepted, will give positive result. And if the fourth one, if accepted, it will definitely give a negative result, that is an adverse effect. 38. Then question number 39. Now this 39 is again based on directions. A is 25 meters to the west of B. B is here. And A is how many meters? A is 25 meters to the west of B. A is 25 meters to the west of B. C is 15 meters to the south of A. And this is C. And how many meters? C is 15 meters to the south of A. South of A. D is 30 meters to the west of C. Now D is how many meters? 30 meters. Now D is 30 meters to the west of C. D is exactly midway between E and F. D is exactly midway between E and F in such a manner that E, D, F form a vertical straight line of 30. E, D, F form a vertical straight line of 30. Hence, E, D and F must be here. And E is to the south of D. As E is to the south of D, E is here and F will be here. Now, the distance between these two is 15. This is again 15 because the total length is 30 meters. Then, how far and in which direction is point F from point A? Where is F? F at this place and A is here. What is the distance between these two? This is nothing but 30 meters towards west. 30 meters towards west choice 3 is the answer. Now question number 39, it is choice 3. Then coming to question number 40 here. Now in this 40, this consists of an information and two statements number 1 and 2 given below it. You have to decide which of the given statements weakens or strengthens the above thing. Now the first one information. What is information here? The reason behind the attrition rate. Yes, what do you mean by this? Attrition means people leaving the organization, isn't it? More and more people are leaving the organization. That's what we call it is attrition. Attrition rate of our company shooting up this year. This year, the attrition rate is going up. That means more and more people are leaving the company. Yes, what is the reason behind this one is that our competitors have started providing better incentives. Statement by HR manager of company X. HR manager of company X stated that the reason why most of the people are leaving from our organization is that the competitors of ours okay, are giving good incentives to these persons. Hence, they are leaving. That's what the statement made by this one. Now, followed by two more statements. Now, we should check out whether this is strengthening the HR, score, HR statement or weakens the HR statement. Now, first one, many employees retired from the service as they reach the maximum is as per the policies of the company X. As per the policies of the company X, most of the people have, are retired from this one. Yes, what is the reason? What is the reason behind this one? Why most of the people are leaving the organization? Because they have retired from this one. It is not because of the incentives declared by the competitors company, isn't it, competitors. Hence, the first one is what? First one weakens. Because the reason is different here. The reason stated in the information is different. Then second one, almost all companies in the industry except company X have revised their incentive plans this year. They will be increasing the incentives by 10%. The competitors have increased by 10%. This company X has not in given any incentives. And this is the reason why may many people are going and this is strengthening the above statement or not? Hence, what is your answer here? First one weakens and the second one strengthens. And one weakens and the next one, second strengthens, so choice five. 
one weakens the information while two strengthens the information then question numbers 41 onwards now question numbers 41 to 45 now tell me what is information here now this is related to some of the players and who are the players gavaskar was on was once asked to compare the battings of sachin tendulkar ravi shastri rahul dravid and kambli and now how many persons are there there are four persons now let us write down the four persons sachin then who is the other shastri is the next person and next one rahul dravid and rahul dravid and the next one is what and the next one is kumble now are the four persons sachin shastri rahul and kumble are the four persons now these four persons are being compared in their style and the shot they like then each of the four players has a particular style of play offensive technically sound and stylish and perfectionist and each of these players was famous for a particular shot then the final tally made by gavaskar was lost but he remains that tendulkar was most famous for stride depth now this tendulkar was famous for what famous for stride depth tendulkar is famous for stride drive next one neither shastri nor kambli were kambli were technically sound now technically sound neither shastri nor kumble kumble or kambli kambli neither shastri nor kambli were technically sound hence either sachin must be technically sound or rahul must be technically sound isn't it and the batsman who is a perfectionist is famous for his flick perfectionist and flick these two must always go together kambli was famous for square cut as yes, what is the shot he likes square cut and this kambli is perfect for famous for square cut dravid has an offensive style what is the style here dravid is offensive style as this person dravid is offensive style hence this person is not technically sound as this person is not technically sound this person is offense offensive now the style is offensive and who is technically sound here sachin tendulkar is technically sound and rahul is offensive and perfectionist and flick must always go together hence it is none other than shastri shastri and it is flick and and he is perfectionist then what else is left over here straight drive flick is square cut and cover drive is left over hence this rahul dravid favorite shot is cover drive and whatever this one here calmly one more is left over what is offensive technically sound stylish and who is the stylish batsman here now this calmly is the stylish batsman none with this sachin shastri dravid and calmly sachin is straight drive technically sound shastri and the shot is flick and he is a perfectionist rahul dravid and his favorite shot is cover drive and offensive and calmly is known for square cut and is a stylish batsman and this is about question numbers 41 to 45 let's write down this one then let us discuss about this 46 to 50 now in this 46 to 50 what is information here presidents of five different countries will be visiting india to participate in the global seminar on pollution and who are those five persons and vladimir putin president of russia isn't it now so let's start with this one now first one who is the first one here putin now this putin is now this putin is from russia putin is russia and putin the president of russia president of russia cannot speak english or jonka now sir here how many languages here putin and from where from russia putin from russia and what are the languages given here now the languages given are english president of russia cannot speak english or jonka now let us write down the languages now first the languages english english next one jonka isn't it jonka next what are the other jonka well also is in obsanjo niger is can in both dutch and jonka dutch and what is the other both dutch and jonka jiang jemin president of china can speak mandarin 
now one more language that is Mandarin, and next one, and English. And a queen, Margaret of Denmark and President Joseph Estrada of Philippines, can speak English and either Jonka or Dutch. Jonka or Dutch English, next one. Each one of them speaks exactly two of the four languages. Yes, tell me, who is the first person here? The first person that is Putin. Now this Putin is the president of Russia. Putin, the president of Russia. And what is the other information here? And the next one is Olchujan of Sanjo. And of Sanjo, now this person is a Nigerian president of Sanjo. Next one, Jiang Zemin. Now this Jiang Zemin is a Chinese president. And finally, and, who, and two more persons are there. Who are those two? One is Queen Margaret of Denmark. Queen Margaret of Denmark. And finally, and Estrada. And Joseph Estrada of Philippines. Joseph Estrada of Philippines. These are the five persons. Now each one of them are well versed with two of the given four languages. Now condition number one. Now Putin. Vladimir Putin, President of Russia, cannot speak English or Jonka. Cannot speak English and Jonka. Cannot speak English and Jonka, hence English is cross and Jonka is cross. Now each one of them definitely speaks exactly two languages, out of which this person cannot, okay? Two languages, cannot speak two languages. And this person must be these two. This Putin must speak these two languages, Dutch and Mandarin. Next one. While well, Old Susan of Sanjo, president of Nigeria, is conversant in both Dutch and Jonka. Both Dutch and Jonka, this person is very versant with these two languages. Now each one of them speaks exactly two of the four languages. Hence, what happened to this one? This person must be. Now this person cannot speak these two languages because each one of them exactly two languages. Next one. Jiang Zemin, president of China, can speak Mandarin and English. Mandarin and English. Jemin, Mandarin, and English, these two are. Hence, this person cannot speak Jonka and Dutch. And this, because this person speaks, Jiang Jemin is good at with these two, English and Mandarin. Next one, what is the other information here? In Mandarin and English, Queen Margaret II of Denmark and President Joseph Estrada of Philippines can speak English. Now, English. Now, these two persons can speak English. And apart from this one, what is the other information here? And one between English, either Jonka or Dutch, though not necessarily in the same order. Either Jonka or Dutch. Now, either only one between these. As only one between these two. Now, we can definitely say that this person is, does not speak, these two persons cannot speak this language, Mandarin. Now, what is the other information here? This is what the information we have. Then with the help of this information, tell me question number 46. And which of the following can act as an interpreter when Jiang Zemin and president of Nigeria wish to confer? And so are those two persons here? Jiang Zemin and Nigerian president. Jiang Zemin can speak which two languages here? Zemin speaks either English or Mandarin. And this person, Nigerian person, speaks Jonka and Dutch. Now who can be an interpreter here? The choice one. Now, only President Vladimir Putin, Putin can now say this Putin and these two persons knows one language that is Mandarin. Now, this Jiang Jemin and Putin will speak in Mandarin. Then this Putin will interpret the same thing and to this person. He translates that one to Absenjo in the same language in the Dutch because this person knows Mandarin and Dutch. Are you getting the answer or not? Now, say this person, Jiang Jemin and Putin can speak what is the common language between these two? Mandarin is common language. They can speak in Mandarin. Now this Putin can speak Dutch and Mandarin. Now this Obsanjo can speak Jonka and Dutch. Hence these two persons will discuss in Dutch. Isn't it? And this person can act as an interpreter or not? Yes. Then second one. Either Queen Margaret or President Joseph. Either Queen Margaret, Queen Margaret. What about this Queen Margaret here? Queen Margaret. Now, yes, which language is common between these two? Now, English is common. Hence, these two persons can converse with English. And this Margaret, then, now this Margaret can, can speak either this one or this one. Now, this person can speak both the languages, isn't it? And this person can act as an interpreter or not? 
Now these two persons first speak in English, then the same thing this person will, okay, translate this one to that Nigerian president either in Jonka or Dutch. And this person can also act as an interpreter. Hence, what is your answer here? As we got two interpreters, hence any one of the above three executives. Third one, and Vladimir Putin and either Queen Margaret or President Joseph. Yes, whatever this President Joseph here, now this President Joseph also can speak in English, and so these two persons speak in English, and the same person, this Joseph, can speak either Jonka or Dutch, and this person can interact with Obsanjo. Then what is your answer here? Choice four. Then question number 47. Now in this 47, which of the following cannot conversant, converse without an interpreter? Without an interpreter, President of Russia and Philippines. Russia and the Philippines, and Russia and the Philippines. Now tell me whether these two persons can, is there any language which, which is common here? Now which of the following cannot converse, converse without an interpreter? Now who is the first person here? The first person is President of Russia and Philippines. Russian president knows which languages? Dutch and Mandarin. And this person, Philippines. Joseph Estad of Philippines. Now this person knows either this one or one between these two. Now, can you definitely say that cannot converse? No. This person may converse because we do not know which language this person knows. If this person knows Dutch, then he can directly converse with that person. Isn't it? Then, Next one, Queen Margaret and Margaret II and Vladimir Putin. Now this Putin is what Putin knows, Dutch and Mandarin. Now, this Queen Margaret may be Dutch or may be Zonka, isn't it? Hence we are not sure about this one. Hence either this could be or this could be. And the third one, Olsanja, Absanja and Jiang Jemin. Now these two persons and Jemin and Jemin and Olsujan. Now these two persons, Jamin and this one, is there any language here? There is no language between these two and these two persons also cannot converse with this. Hence what is your answer here? Either one or two and three. One or two and three. Then question number 48. Now in this 48, beside, besides Jiang Jamin, who can converse with President Vladimir Putin without an interpreter? Without an interpreter? No, sir. Jiang Jamin can directly speak to him. And who is the other person here? Dutch and Dutch. These two persons can speak Dutch, Putin and Obsanjo. And Putin and Obsanjo, that is four. Isn't it? Again, either Queen Margaret or Joseph Estrada. This can also be your answer. Why? Because these two persons can, between these two persons, one can speak either Dutch or Zonka. And either of these two persons can also directly speak with this Putin. And so what is your answer here? Both three and four. That is choice five. 48, choice 5. Then 49. Now question number 49. Of the languages spoken at this global seminar, which are the two least common? Yes, which are the two least common here? English, English is three persons. And Dutch, how many persons? Three persons, isn't it? As of now, two. One between these two persons, that is three persons. And next one, Dutch and Jonka. Dutch is three. And Jonka, Jonka can be only two. Isn't it? Jonka is only two. Next one, English and Jonka, English is three. And Mandarin and Jonka, Mandarin, how many persons? There are only two persons. And Jonka, there are only two persons. Hence, choice four is the answer. And 49. Then question number 50. Now, in this one, if a president of sixth country is brought to be understood by the maximum number of original five, and who should be fluent in? English, because there are three persons who can speak in English. And at the same time, and what is the other here? And the Dutch. Because Dutch already two people, one between these two people will also know Dutch, hence three people. Hence English and Dutch, that is choice one. Now this is about question numbers 56 to 46 to 50. Done with this? Yes, clear? And the next is English.